hearts would be uh, sensitive to what you want to highlight today. And that we all would be blessed by it in Jesus' precious name. Can you say amen? amen? Amen. Are we connected online? So let's welcome everybody that's joining us right now. Amen. Welcome to our morning service, Strong Tower Church in Effingham, Illinois. And I want to get your attention to the book of 2 Kings chapter 5. 2 Kings chapter 5. I, I, I probably will be sharing, I was trying to see, I always, I, I don't know, some preachers, they, I've heard one that's very known, that before the message, that the hardest thing is to find a title, <laughs> you know, because sometimes you put a title that is not, doesn't even make sense in the message, and he said he, he has 17 titles, usually, for his message, when I saw him sharing, and he's on TV and everything, I was encouraged, because I thought, well, I, I think I have like five or six, and sometimes, you know, and, and sometimes we can correct or put on the subtitles or sometimes, you know. But I, I want us to talk, uh, probably we're sharing about cleansing water. You could say amen, but, yeah. <laughs> but it's a very known story. But I, I want us to see how, the power of the Word of God, the power. Uh, I always pray, you know, for this, because it is true. If our eyes don't see and your ears don't hear... You can be here looking at me, and you could miss what God wants to communicate to you. Just the same way that sometimes one person says, man, the service was amazing. And the other person is like, didn't feel anything. So I, I, I understand that, and all the time of preaching and praying, and that it's very important that our eyes would see what God wants to show us. That our ears would hear, I mean, you can go to Mark chapter 4, the types of soil, and then, or Matthew 13, and you see that if you see and you hear, you, and your heart understand, then a shift can come. Then a change can take place, because change will not take place if we don't see, hear, and understand. Amen? It's like in order for me to, to change, or in order for me to see that I need a change, our eyes, ears, and heart, they have to be open. And so it's very important, and that's why I really, really want everybody, and I hope that every week, that's what I try to do, that you would connect from the beginning. Because sometimes it's, it does not apply the whole message. Sometimes it's one thing. Sometimes people tell me, oh, pastor, when you said this, this, and that, he blessed me so much. And then I go back in my mind, it's like, I didn't say that. I'm serious. And so... It is very important that when, that's why we need the revelation of God. Because sometimes I say one thing, but God wants to speak to you so much that through that you see what he was trying to get to you. Amen. So when we go there, it's a very known scripture. It says, now Naaman, uh, which his name, I mean, name, Naaman means uh, pleasantness or pleasant. I believe that's where they got the feminine version is Naomi, because it's the same thing. Naaman, now Naaman, commander of the army of the king of Syria, was great and honorable man in the eyes of his master. Because by him the Lord had given victory to Syria. He was also a mighty man of valor. I mean, that's a good description, right? If someone is describing you or describing what you are or uh, describing your accolades and what you do and what you stand up for. I mean, it's pretty good. Now, Naaman, a commander of the army the, of the king of Syria, I mean, it's pretty, pretty important, was a great and honorable man in the eyes of his master because, him, you know, by him, the Lord have given victory to Syria. He was also a mighty man of valor, comma, but... A leper. He had leprosy. And every time I see Naaman, I mean, you're going to see that God changes his life. Amazing. I, and when I was checking yesterday, it, it, the problem was not only leprosy. We're going to see that there was more things going on. And sometimes one problem can affect all the rest of our lives. It is not like that we have many problems. Sometimes there is one thing that through that one thing, other things happen. So that tells me that if I go to the root of the problem, I'm going to stop the root or the fruit that I don't want to manifest in my life anymore. 
If I don't see what is causing it, or why it's causing it, or why that has happened, it might happen again. So it is important that we go and we pray. I mean, I, I don't know you. I really want God, you know, I, I don't want to be going around the same mountain over and over again for many, many, many years. Hello? Why would we walk 40 years around something that we could be there in 12 days? Why would we keep falling for the same errors? Why we keep doing the same things? And I know there's a lot of things that we could talk about, you know, but, but the, at the same time, we have to have the, be very, very open. And if there's something wrong, it's wrong. Thank you, Al. <laughs> so I'm going to say that again. If something is wrong, it's wrong. We don't say it's fine. It's not fine. You know, and I know sometimes people don't like me because of that. Because I say it how it is. If I'm not feeling well, you know, and I, we're not, you know, I, I don't know. We expect always to be good. But I know, you, I don't know you. I, <laughs> I have some bad days. I'm being very real. I mean, you know, sometimes I have more than I want them to have. I wish it was different. But that does not minimize God's power, God's presence. That does not minimize that God can change, that God can heal, that God can deliver. He's God. We pray for that. He's God. So we need to understand. But again, it's almost like when I see Naaman, uh, sometimes I see, uh, you know, and I, please don't get me wrong if I uh, compare in a way that we go through the same thing because he was a commander. What do you expect from a commander? I mean, you can expect him to be brave. You expect him to have his sword ready. You expect him to fight at any moment. You expect him to be courageous and sometimes courageous. Eh? <laughs> but at the same time that we have the commander, we have comma. And that's where it gets me. It is like, could it be that we, because of our place, our position, or where we are, could it be because of our family? Could it be because people have, look at us and they just see the commander? That they don't see the coma. That they don't see that there is something that we're dealing with because it's behind the armor. And usually, I mean, really, most people are not prepared to deal with reality. Because, oh, well, if I say this, or if I do that, or if I, no, no, then I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to lose my place, or my status, or my position. So I can understand. I mean, you see that all of that came first, and then in the end, almost like whispering, but he had leprosy. Right? It's like, come on! Leprosy. It's like, you know, when you, I don't know how you describe yourself. It was funny, you know, that... Uh, when I travel more and people, sometimes pastors would say, oh, can you send us your, um, your information? And they wanted kind of a resume kind of thing, you know, and what you do and if you have any books. And I mean, so I had a little thing that I, you know, and, and, and I, that I would send it to them. And, you know, and, but I, I, I always thought like when you do that, I mean, you don't see it, right? I mean, maybe tell them when, when he's going to hire someone. You don't see in most resumes that the people have, may have a problem. Actually, I never see a resume where they would say, yes, but I'm bipolar. <laughs> right? Uh, yeah, next. And the other one is even crazier. Because in the resume, you want to do or you want to show or you want to present yourself as someone that is like Naaman. You know, so I mean, that, that's what got me yesterday. And, and the more I read and I, and I was like, man, I mean, it's pretty good when you, you see the beginning. But there was a coma there. And, and, and I, I, I want us to see that today a little with clarity because it is the same thing. It might not be leprosy. It might not be something as bad, especially in those times. I mean, and when you see in the Bible leprosy, it's like it is not only a, a disease that could kill. But it was something to illustrate the work of sin. That, that really, I mean, when you go through the Bible, it was like, like leprosy, sin is a vile, contaminating, mortifying, unclean thing. It starts out as a spot. Bless you. 
that grows and fasters until it takes in the whole person. Condem condemning him to death. So sin is a vile, contaminating, and it could be any sin. You know, I mean, in our minds, sometimes we think that some sins are worse than others. Sin is sin. It is sin. It needs to be dealt with. Because if we don't deal, we can be mortified. It, it is an unclean thing. It can start as a little spot. Because the enemy, I mean, he doesn't care. If he has a little bit of our hearts, that's all it takes for that contamination to take place. And that's why when I see Naaman, it was like, it was something that was concerning. It was something that was like, yeah, you thought it was that. I mean, a powerful commander of the army. I mean, victories and he was honorable. And I mean, you know, there's so much going on for him that he had leprosy. Now, something happens here that's quite interesting. Look, and the Syrians had gone out on raids and had brought back captive a young girl from the land of Israel. So the Syrians, they, they were not friends. No, 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 they're far from that. They were enemies. The Syrians had gone out on raids and had brought back captive a young girl from the land of Israel. She waited on Naaman's wife. Then she said to her mistress, If only my master were with the prophet who is in Samaria, for he would heal him of his leprosy. Isn't it interesting that I mean, leprosy was contagious, but when you see that, Naaman's leprosy did not infect the slave girl. But this girl's compassion affected Naaman. If it, it, it was contagious. Not only that, she was captive. So... Someone in captivity or someone that is a prisoner, uh, you know, it's, it's very hard, but she didn't lose the essence of who she was. Hello? Because sometimes, as I shared last week, you know, uh, blessed are the persecuted because theirs is the kingdom of God and their reward is great and this and that. I mean, it's the same thing because when the continuation of that word, you blessed if you do this, blessed if you be blessed and blessed and blessed. Uh, after that, it says that you should be the salt and you should be light. And the connection last week was like, how can you be salt and light when you're being persecuted? Hello? I mean, it, it is one thing to be salt and light, but it is a complete different ballgame. When you have to be salt and light being persecuted, it means like, don't let your light, light dim because of persecution. Don't lose your flavor. Because of persecution. And this girl to me, it was like, doesn't matter. She was captive, but they could not captive, they could not incarcerate her heart. Because, you know, it's, it's like, in a way, she was really blessing her enemy because they brought her into captivity, but she sees him, and maybe he was, that thing that we talked about, he was trying to hide. She saw it. Not only she saw it, she gave the recipe. She said, well, you know, if he only knew the prophet, he would be healed. So she shares that, and I believe that, you know, it says that she was serving her, her Naaman's wife. So the, 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 she found out, the wife knew about it, and Naaman seems like he was trying to hide the problem. Seems like he was trying to cover up since he was a captain. It's like, how could she see that? You know, so there are several things happening here. But the next thing that I see is like, then he said to her mistress, if only my master, in verse 4 it says, and Naaman went in and told his master saying, thus and thus said the girl who is from the land of Israel. Then the king of Syria said, go now and I will send a letter the king, to the king of Israel. So he departed and took with him. I mean, you see, there's so much going on. And I kind of, I read the, the text. Then I went reading, I, I read in the backwards. I went back and I begin to realize there has to be a reason that he had to be seven times that he had to dip himself in the water. 
it wasn't one or it wasn't two or three or four. It had to be seven times. So I began to see, could it be that the things that we see in Naaman is because he was not only leprous, he was attached to his body. There was a lot more that was attached to him that he didn't even know. He wasn't aware of it. And sometimes we go through the same thing. It is like there's things that we collect. There's things that we gather along the way. Attached to us. I mean, to me, when I see this, the girl said, go see the prophet. What, where does, what does he do? He went and saw his master. He didn't go see the prophet. What does he do next? He goes see the king. And he asks for letters. And when I was reading that, I, you know, sometimes we got to be careful with the level of influence that we have. Because uh, the solution is not in the connections. The solution he was looking for it was in the hand of God. And sometimes people think, and we're all like that, I'm like that too. You know, some people think like that, that it's like, you know, um, well, I know that person, and I know this, and uh, yeah, and I know that, and maybe I'm going to talk to this one, and he's going to talk to that one, and then, uh, the, you know, what I need, they're going to, in some way... You know, no, 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 no. The girl was very clear, you got to go to the man of God. you got to go to the one who has the revealed word of God. Not the king, not the letters, whatever you have, it, it won't help you because you had that all along. It never worked. You still had leprosy. What you need is something that only God can do. And we have all church, all of us, we need to get to this place where we surrender completely and we realize it is God. That's why I like those four men that carry the fifth man and, they, and they, they couldn't go through the door and they went up and they broke the roof and they took it off and they brought him down. They understood something. It's like, I can bring you just as far as to here. I cannot do that. You're going to have to go down in the presence of Jesus. I will bring you to his presence. Uh, and yes, you might come to church and you might come to the place where he is, where you can find him. In my strength, in my legs, in my face, but you're going to walk in your own face. You're going to get up in your own strength. When he speaks a word over you, that is powerful enough for you not to be in that paralysis anymore. That's why I like them, because it's like, you, you know, we, we, we can. And it's not wrong, nothing wrong with having connections. It's awesome to have friends and, you know, I mean, really. The, the, he had some amazing connections, but he was missing the point. Like, if you're going to be healed and you don't, you, you've not been healed before, the instruction was very clear. You've got to go see the prophet who is in Samaria. But I think he's a little bit, not only that, when you see like where he was in Syria and where the prophet was, it was about a 120 mile journey. He had to make a, a trip, I mean 120 miles, and not only that, he had to go into the enemy's territory. So, you know, Naaman went in and told his master, saying, Thus and thus, said the girl. And then the king of Syria said, Go now and I will send a letter. Yeah, a letter won't help you. So he departed and took with him ten talents. Even if when God uses people, I mean, we have to realize it's God. Because I remember, I mean, when we were waiting for our citizenship or, or green card still, not even the citizenship yet. You know, yeah, people would say, oh, you need to know this person. You need to know that person. And maybe you need to call or a representative, and, which it helped. And I, one thing that I, I always really prized, it was like, you know, from day one, it was like you, you see all kinds of things, things that you don't even think it happens in the U.S., unfortunately. But people would offer you to do illegal things to, to be legal And I was like, wait, wait, wait a second. You're telling me to do something illegal so I can become legal. Which I could preach on that alone. Because it was so crazy that in my mind it was like, if God wants me in this nation, He's going to make a way. He's going to do something. He, he is going to do I always pray, and really, God did. And I never, ever, ever, I wanted to be illegal. I wanted to be with my visa expired. I mean, I, every time, I really, I said, God, if you want to see here, something's going to happen. And I remember one time they couldn't find our paperwork. And it was like one day to be expired. And somehow, someone knew Shinkus. Right, Shinkus? Shinkus? 
a representative at that time, and someone called him. I don't know what he did. He went, I mean, he really went out of his way. He never, I never met him. And he found out our paperwork, it was there, someone's desk, that they never did what they were supposed to do. And I don't know what he did, but next day, I mean, it was miraculous. It was like, next day. It was like, nope, they did it wrong, and this happened, and that happened, and yes, so you're going to have an extension. You know, and, and I mean, he was miraculous. Yes, God used him, but the favor and the grace and the whatever he needed to do, he had to be the hand of God. So we should not, and again, nothing wrong, praise God for the connections, but we have to understand that we need supernatural intervention. Are you with me? So when we see here, it, it is like, yes, it, it was good. He had the letters, but he needed, he couldn't see that it was not the letter that was going to release the healing. It was not what he did. It was not what others could do. It, it had to be something that only God could do it. Now he goes there and then the king, and he tells him the king got desperate because he thought they were setting him up. Look, verse 5, then the king of Syria said this, so he went, and then verse 6, then he brought the letter to the king of Israel, which, sell, which said, now be advised when this letter comes to you that I have sent Naaman, my servant, to you, that you, look at this, even the content of the letter, that you may heal him of his leprosy. And it happened when the king of Israel read the letter that he tore his clothes. And he said, am I God to kill and make alive that this man sends a man to me to heal him of his leprosy? To heal him of something that he doesn't want anybody to see. To heal him of something that could take him out. To heal him of something that he, he, you could not notice because he always had the armor. Therefore, please consider and see how he seeks. Tell me, this is the king saying, therefore, please consider and see how he seeks a quarrel with me. So it was when Elisha... The man of God heard that the king of Israel had torn his clothes, that he sent to the king saying, Why have you torn your clothes? Let him come to me. And he shall know that there is a prophet in Israel. I mean, he was not afraid. He was not intimidated. We know, I mean, Elisha's remarkable. All the things he did, twice as much as Elijah. Then Naaman went with his horses. Look at this. To me, it seems like he wanted to be treated like royalty. Then Naaman went with his horses and chariot, and he stood at the door of Elisha's house. Can you imagine? And Elisha, the prophet, sent a messenger to him saying, he didn't even go out. He wanted... I mean, when you see there is so much more, and that's why I believe there was, had to be seven times, he needed to be, I mean, he really, really needed to wash himself in the Word of God. It wasn't only leprosy. There was something else going on that he was so blind because of his position, because he had to show off that everything was fine. And Elisha sent a messenger to him saying, Go! I mean, that alone, I can see like, what? He's not even coming out? Go and wash in the Jordan seven times. And your flesh shall be restored to you. And you shall be clean. I mean, I imagine he had all that, I mean, in gold and silver. and I mean, he, he really had a lot of stuff that he thought he could buy the healing. He can't. He thought by his gifts and he thought by what he had accomplished and he thought he came with all that he had and Elisha sends a messenger. I mean, he went, I mean, it, it is hard to deal with prophets. It is. You know, 
I mean, I don't consider myself a prophet. God gives me some revelation of some things and, you, you know, but a prophet is like you're talking to him. And it seems like he cuts you open. Not even knowing to the point that some people, when they're talking to the prophet, it's like, who told you that? Nobody, because it, it is. I, I've got a few friends like that, that they are prophetic even when they're, they don't even need to pray. They begin to talk to you, and all of a sudden, it's like are, your life is, is like open. And you're like, I mean, <laughs> what's going on here? That's what he was. By sending a message, I mean, very short message, by not showing up, he was, I mean, he was already playing. He was like really going into his mind. It's like, oh, Naaman, you are not owed that. No, you're not. No, Naaman. And I know that you're not. But look, it is amazing because you see his reaction. Naaman became furious. So Naaman became furious. He was like he was not expecting that kind of reception. And, and I can see that he didn't like to be, you know, he didn't like that. He, didn't, he wasn't getting his way or his own way. But Naaman became furious and went away and said, Indeed, I said to myself, He will surely come out to me and stand and call on the name of the Lord his God and wave his hand. I mean, he thought it was magic. Over the place and heal the leprosy. Isn't that funny that he needs the miracle, but he wants to determine how the miracle should happen. I mean, that, that doesn't happen with us. But, you know, sometimes we, right? Sometimes we try to give God ideas. I mean, I don't know. you. I, I even have had conversations with God like, you know, God, I, it's been a long time. Jesus came to earth. I'm just saying. And I tried that approach because he has lightnings and thunder and all that. So it's like, you know, don't be mad. You know, and sometimes we try to talk God into this or into that. It seems good. Or we try to ask God, it's almost like we forget that He is God, we're not. We forget that He is Lord, that He is in charge. And so because we are expecting, there's nothing wrong. Yeah, He wanted to be healed, He heard. I mean, He messed up because He went to the king, He went to His master, He went to all the king. So yes, but He didn't understand it. It's like, no, 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 name it. The position for you to receive what you need from God, it's not that one. You don't tell God how He should do it. If you're going to God, you better wait on His. It's going to be on His terms. It's the same thing like people that wanted God's blessing, but they don't want God. Wait a minute. You want God to bless you big time, but at the same time, you don't want to do what God wants you to do. And, and they, some people would say, yeah. It's almost like they're so blind by it that it's like, yeah, I want the blessing. What is wrong with it? Nothing wrong, but since it's going to be God's way... You're going to have to follow whatever he tells you to. Simple instruction. He almost misses his blessing. What I like about Naaman is that he, I mean, he heard his servants. You can see it. I mean, she, he heard a captive, you know, the girl that was in captivity. And now he almost missed, but he hears his servants. So, yes, he had a listening ear. But he was not that, you know, he was like, yeah, I want God, but not that much. That's what people do. They do. They want God. I mean, if you say, do you believe in God? Oh, yeah, I believe in God. This week, you know, I offered to pray for the kids that are in, um, they went to Florida with the band. You guys know that, right? Or, or, or high, school, high schoolers. Two buses, I think over 80 people, 17 chaperones. I just offer. I said, I can go there and pray. And someone talked to someone, they talked to someone, they talked to my wife, and then they said, well, you can pray, but you cannot pray for the kids. Like, with the kids. You know, and I thought, okay. You know, since God opened that door, I thought, well, if I believe that there is power in prayer, it doesn't matter if the kids are not there. It does matter that whatever I speak, 
So, and out of 17 chaperones, I mean, we had what, six or seven that came. And then, you know, I mean, I, I, I spoke a, a, a short word and I said, well, before I pray, everybody was just waiting. And I said, I want to say something. And then they were like, I thought you're going to pray. Yeah, I'm going to pray, but since I got the mic, I thought, you know. <laughs> And I said, we're here for 12 years, and we're praying for revival to come since the first time we came to Ephraim. And I said, when revival comes, the hearts of the parents will turn towards their kids, and the hearts of the kids will turn toward their parents. So I just want to say that, that, you know, you can expect that because it's going to happen. And then I pray. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I bless the bus. And I bless the kids. And I bless even those who didn't come. Yeah, you're going to be blessed too because my kid is there. Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, I believe that. It's like, why would... No, no, no. I have to believe for my kid and now your kid. You don't even believe in God, but I do. So it's not like God is going to protect mine and boo on you. No. No, no. They're on the same bus. <laughs> Amen. So it was such an experience. And then uh, I, I think we asked and said, they said, well, would you like to see the kids? And you can go in. There was this little door there. And I said, sure, let's go there. And I saw Kendrick. And, and I mean, you know how kids are, right? All the kids are there in the cafe, cafe, cafeteria. And, and, and they were with their little trays and stuff like that. And I, and I could see he didn't want to see me. So I texted him. I said, bud, you better come and see me before you go. Yeah, I don't know if you saw the message. It was just the conviction of my presence there. <laughs> he came. So I hugged, and I was like this and that, you know, and we do have a few rules that you're like one and two, and the third one is like don't break rule number one, you know, and so I always emphasize that. But when he came, all the bodies that, that his buddies that are going to be with him in the, be, the, the, the hotel room, they came too. And I thought, whoo, I'm going to pray again. Of course, first we took pictures, and they were like, yeah, yeah. Oh, come on, dude. And he said, oh, Dad, that's the wrong angle. I said, okay. And I said, guys, would you mind? Let's come around. And again, I blessed them. If you show up, God will make a way. But you have to show up. Church, we cannot just allow things to happen and not be aware or not do anything about it. Because the enemy is after our kids. Believe me, the enemy is after our kids. And we need to do something to protect them more than praying, more than just going to the games. We need to be really, really, really engaged. And sometimes God will give you some things. And I hope Jesse forgives me for this one. But I, I, I you know, it's asked, what is it? easier to ask for forgiveness than permission. So I'll deal with her later. But... You know, and my, my, I mean, there are my babies. There are. She's 19, but she's like a big baby. And, and, and she, she knows that. And, and Belle is the same. She's 18. And Kendrick's 15. He's going to be 16 next year. So, I mean, she was dealing with something. I didn't know. And, and I, thank God they asked me, even if they messed up already, they asked me. So she comes to me and she said, Dad, I'm, um, I kind of, kind of, she was like this. I kind of, um, I, 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 I kind of commit to this play and, uh, and I don't know what to do now. And I said, okay, tell me. Tell me more. And she said, well, I got I to gotta be in this play. And uh, I might need to say a few words that, I, 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 uh, that I'm not very comfortable. And I said, okay. And, uh, and then there was another part that she needed to kiss a boy in the play. And I didn't lose my cool, though. I didn't. I really didn't. Believe me. I, I was just like, that is a very good teaching moment. You know, and I mean, the, and I, so I saw it. I, I knew it was a very, very important moment that I had to drop everything and talk to her. So, you know, I was like, you know, and I could see that really bothered her enough to call me. So I thought, I'm not going to lose this moment. And the more she talked, I could see that, like, she wanted to get out now, but she didn't know how to get out because she had committed already. And then I said, baby, you've got to ask this question. If you do it, will you glorify Jesus?
And then there was silence. And I think, I think your silence tells me the answer. She's, and then she starts crying. <laughs> I said, okay, I understand. Babe, it is okay. You've committed, and I understand that. That Have you asked your teacher if there was any other character, any other person that you could do in the play? No, I didn't. I said, so uh, do you want to know what I would do if I was you and I had already committed and I, you didn't know that that might happen and this and that? Yes, yeah, I said, I don't know what to do. I said, okay, so this is what you're going to do. You're going to tell you, but what if I do it and then, you know, they're going to put an X on me for the next years that I'm here and then everything, they're going to be like putting me down because I, I said, oh, baby, you don't know that yet. But that should be part of your question to her. I don't feel comfortable. This is my boundary. I'm not going to cross. This is not how I was raised up. This is not what I believe. I, and I don't feel comfortable. And I, is there a way that we can change? And, you know, I didn't know she was about to enter in to practice. And I'm talking to her and someone calls her. Jess, you got to come now. So I prayed a quick prayer and I said, babe, God is with you, but at least give her an opportunity to see who you are, what you are, what you stand for. She goes in two hours later. She was so happy and excited. She said, dad, I said what you said and she agreed and she took me out of that position. <laughs> and she and she apologized for pushing me to do something that she didn't know I wasn't comfortable in doing. And she said, I'm sorry, I was pushing your boundaries. And I was like, yes! Hallelujah! So you see, that's, I don't even know why I got on that subject. I think it was just a good story. But it happened this week. But that's the thing. The enemy is after and we have to speak up. If we don't, the enemy wins. If daddy doesn't show up or mom doesn't show up, I mean, we have to understand. It's like, wait a second. I, I said that when I was preaching about carrying the glory of God, that if we don't show up, the enemy is already there. If we don't speak up, someone is already speaking up. If we don't say, no, that's not going to happen, someone is going to be there saying why they should do it. So again, we need this, you, you know, even if you're not a prophet, we need to have those senses in the spirit. You need to realize, wait a second, something is not right. The same week, this week, I got, after Wednesday night, I had this crazy pain right here. Crazy. That I never had in my life. And I prayed and I rebuked and I took medication and the pain was there. And I went home and then my wife, she, she, she didn't see that there was a text from her again. She had exactly the same pain. And I thought, so it's not me. God is allowing me to feel her pain so we can pray for her. And I said, let's call her. Call her. 9.30 something, right? And I called and we prayed. And I said, baby, uh, I, I felt that pain. I'm sorry we didn't see your message. We were in the service. And so we, we're going to pray. And I begin 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 to rebuke. And I begin to speak the name of Jesus. And I begin to release the anointing of God. Watch this now. And then all of a sudden, I saw a pyramid in the eye of Horus on top of it. In the prayer. Now, it's a very unique vision. It's not like I was thinking about that. Right? I didn't see the dollar bill and it's like, oh, okay, you know. But I said, baby, I see a pyramid, three-dimensional. I see the eye of Horus was looking at you and now he's looking at me. I saw in the spirit. And I said, so I want to rebuke that in the name of Jesus. Da -da 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 -da. And she said, uh, um, dad, um, um, me and Bella kind of watched a mini series yesterday about the eye of Horus. In the pyramid. And I was like. <laughs> the reaction was like. Oh my God. And I said okay babe. So uh, I believe God is telling you. You shouldn't. And she said yeah dad. Now that I think I shouldn't. Okay, so okay. Repeat after me. Lord I ask you to forgive me. I'm being very practical church. Really. They're kids. But the enemy is bombarding their lives. And thank God for revelation knowledge. Not in a million years I could go that, know that information if it wasn't through the Holy Spirit. And I'm not trying to put her down. No, some things they just hear. They think there is nothing. There's no problem. No, no. Why would God reveal something to me during prayer 
that if he didn't want us to deal with that. So I believe he's an alert for most of us here, parents or grandparents. It's like we need to be aware. We need to just like Elisha. He could see beyond Naaman coming to him. That's why he didn't go out. See, I got to tie everything together. I'm back into the message now. <laughs> but the, that's the thing though. Him not going out, it was showing like, I know your problem. I know what you're going through and that's what you need to do. And um, uh, yeah, he got infuriated. How come this happened? Yes, that's why it, it was so important. It is important to this day. When you have a feeling, an impression, when God gives you a dream, when, when God gives you something, or don't miss those moments to speak Jesus over your children. Don't miss a moment. Don't miss a moment. It's like, I don't know why I have this impression. Well, let's find out. Because the more you, you value, the more you are, have attentive ears, the more you see in the Spirit, the more comfortable you are. It was not like something, you know, I was like a... Mm, no, 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 no. It was like revelation knowledge. And God wanted to give something so she could be free. I mean... And I told us, I mean, it's a hard thing to be a pastor's daughter. Especially with the prophetic gift. Because God will reveal things. And that has happened to Kendrick and Bella many times. When I had a dream, and I think about the dream. And I, the more I think about the dreams, oh, i got to tell them. Because sometimes God gives me names, and sometimes God shows me kids that they know that I don't know, but they know. And then I said, you know, I had this weird dream. I'm just saying, if this, this, and that happen... Run. And then later on they said, Oh, Dad, that was right on. And I was like, Okay, it is God. It's not me. We can't make that up, church. But I just feel like the same thing is happening. God wants us to be aware that our surroundings, the enemy, wants to take over. And we need to push back darkness. I've been praying and saying that over and over and over again. Me and my house, we will serve the Lord. I don't know anybody else's house. I, I would pray and believe that, yes, they should do. But in my house, yes, we're going to serve God. And I'm not just going to be sitting down and it's like, well, whatever it is, it is. I mean, no, you know, they're kids. Or they're so young. Oh, man, no, that is too radical. I am radical. I don't have a problem when people say, man, you're radical. Thank you. That is the best compliment I could have. Because you have to be radical to confront darkness. You're going to have to turn off your TV to some things, or maybe most of it, if you want to be God and have a clear understanding of His Word. I mean, I'm serious. I'm determined. It's like, Lord, I want to hear you more. I want to know you more. I want to know you better. I want to learn your ways. I don't want my ways. Your ways are higher than mine. Your thoughts are higher than mine. So, Lord, I need to elevate my thinking, and I need to understand that everything that is happening, you got a greater plan. Woo! Hallelujah! I just hear my spirit. God has a greater plan. So I'm going to speak that over everybody's life here and watching on TV or on the internet. God has a greater plan. God has a greater plan for you. God has a greater plan for your life. God has a greater plan for your finances. God has a greater plan for everything that is about you. It is greater. It is higher. And He just wants to come up higher. Come up higher. Don't wait on others to pray for you. I mean, praying for others to pray for you is awesome. But you be the prayer warrior. You be the one who you know that prays in tongues that worships God that releases the atmosphere that changes the atmosphere because sometimes yes the atmosphere will be heavy and you don't know what you're dealing with we're dealing with powers of darkness we're dealing with rulers of darkness we're dealing with things in the spirit we don't see it but that's how powerful the word of god is because we sing we spoke the name of jesus the name of jesus above every name Amen. how many of you believe that Amen. that's why we speak jesus that's why we speak jesus there is i mean even if you can't say anything you can you have to say jesus 
I speak Jesus over my children. I speak Jesus over my wife. I speak Jesus over my finances. I speak Jesus over my body. I speak Jesus over my mind. Because he who keep in perfect peace, he whose mind stays in the Lord. It is all about Him. It is all about Him. It is all about Him. And uh, I mean, the enemy is pushing the envelope forever. And, it, and some things now, everybody saying, oh, but it's okay. It is not okay. No, it's not okay. No, 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 no. Things that I, when I talk to you guys, and it's like, oh, when I was growing up, it was like this, this, and that. And when I was growing up, it was not much different. And why we changed that? I mean, so much good came out of those boundaries. So much good came out of like, you know, going to church every Sunday or going to church every time the doors were open. Or even when I didn't want it and I, I, I felt my mom pinching my leg. Great, wake up. <laughs> he did something to me. He did something that I had to practice hour after hour after hour. I started singing in the choir when I was 10. Saturday, that was our life. We would go to church, we would practice, we would play, I played the organ back then, <laughs> you know, and uh, yes, that's, that's what was our life. And we, I, I was part of a group that everybody was four or five years older than me, but because the voice that I had with 10 years old, they said, oh, you got to sing with us. I said, yeah, let's do it. And I was this little bit kid. And when I look back, thank God, thank God. That my mom would go and pray and do whatever she did. Thank God. that I mean, back then I thought, oh, come on, Ma. And now I call her every day to say, thank you, Ma. I didn't turn out too bad. Thank you. <laughs> you know, but we think like if we do those things, that kids are going to go away. No, if we don't do it, they're going to go away. So we got to say, we got to speak Jesus. We got to, and, and that's what God was trying to get Naaman's attention. He was like, Naaman, your position, your armor, your weapons, your money, your tunics, everything you have means nothing because all of that, you still had it before you came and they did not bring you healing. They did not bring you the deliverance you need. The only one who can give you that is God. Amen. Hallelujah. So Naaman, he became furious. Why? Look, at look. I mean, he was a prejudice too. He, he had some... Indeed, I said to myself, he'll surely come out to me and stand and call in the name of the Lord his God and wave his hand over the place. I, I, even the river, he didn't like that it was the Jordan. Are not Abana and the Farfar, the rivers of Damascus, better than all the waters of Israel. Do you need healing or not? I mean, right? It's, it's like, really? You're going to choose what river you want to dip in? Why did you come? Could I not wash in them and be clean? So he turned and went away in a rage. I mean, he had uh, some anger problems. First he was furious, now he's in a rage. I mean... Why Jordan? It is important to realize this. The Jordan River in the Bible, the Jordan River appears many times within the scriptures. It, offer, it often refers to a freedom that comes after a long season of adversity and waiting. Crossing the Jordan is a turning point on the way to freedom. The waters of the Jordan represent freedom from oppression, breakthrough, and deliverance. Now, something else happened about the Jordan because that was the last time that he was with Elijah. That is in 2 Kings 2, verses 6 through 14, where Elijah Elijah touched the waters, the waters open, and they go through. So for him, it was a very important moment in his life, the before and after. So Jordan represented, because after they crossed, Elijah asked him, ask whatever you want before I go. And he said, I want a double portion of your anointing. Amen? Amen. And we know what happens. And then the, tunic, the, the you know, uh, mantle from Elijah comes down. He gets the mantle. He divides in two. Touch the water. The same thing happens. It was a confirmation of his ministry. 
It was a confirmation that he got a double portion. It was a confirmation that now God was with him and was going to use him in a mighty way like he was doing here. So I believe in his mind he was like, yeah, he need a, a Jordan encounter. He needed to go back to the place where God marked my life. Somehow I have to believe that he was like, no, 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 Naaman, what you need is not me, it's not the king, it's not your clothes, it's not your money, it's not whatever you brought. What you need, it is a Jordan encounter. What you need, it is to go down on those waters because I remember what happened with me when I went down. We know in Jordan, in the New Testament, it was a place where uh, John the Baptist was baptizing people. The Jordan River in the New Testament, baptism is highly, highly symbolic. It signifies the end of the old life and the start of the new life as a Christian believer. It identifies with Christ's death, burial, and resurrection. Hallelujah. So Naaman was going beyond leprosy Naaman was going like God doesn't want to only heal you he wants you he wants your heart he wants to change our spiritual life how many of you can see that I mean what good would it do you know sometimes I'm concerned when I pray for some people for healing because it's like they are so connected in whatever they're going or their religion or whatever it is that if God heals them they're going to give glory to somebody else because God does not have their heart they think was their God or their saint or whatever it, it, it's like we have to come to the place where it's like no nothing else matters nobody else we know is Jesus amen now watch this and now, so he was talking about the river, and his servants again came near and spoke to him and said, My father, if the prophet had told you to do something great, I mean, those servants are amazing, would you not have done it? How much more then when he says to you, Wash and be clean. So he went down and dipped seven times in the Jordan according to the word according to the saying of the man of God and his flesh was restored like flesh of a little child and he was clean simple instruction now we know this the word of God is like water that cleanses us Ephesians 5:25 it talks about husbands, love your wives, just as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for her, that he might sanctify and cleanse her with the washing of water by the word. Hello? So that tells me, like, if you have to be seven times, you know, it's not that you need to go and baptize yourself seven times, but you need to allow the word of God to keep washing you, cleansing it's like, yeah, I'm still dealing with this. Yes, yeah, so I need to go back to the Word of God and allow the Word of God to go deeper and wash that away in the name of Jesus. Lord, wash me. Wash my mind. Wash my thought life. Wash what I do. Wash my mouth. Wash, Lord God. You, you have to go over and over and over and over until you're like a child again. Because something happened in his life that he became so contaminated. And I believe that's what it is, church. There is some scriptures that you read and 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 then suddenly, boom. I'm serious. That scripture that I mentioned about the peace of God, I remember when Alice was preaching. I mean, she preached, uh, you know, on, on the peace of God and how to receive the peace of God. A lot of scriptures, something happened when she said that verse that He will keep us in perfect peace. If our mind stays in the Lord. I have even preached that for years. But that day, it was like, ding. So we don't know. But if we're still dealing with something, wash it again. 
If you're still dealing with some whatever the problem might be, it could be an addiction, it could be pornography, it could be whatever, it's like, wash it again. Oh, it's not working. Continue the dipping. Let God do the cleaning. Cleansing. Let God do what He can do, but I'm going to continue to put in the Word of God. If it is anger, go back to the Word of God. Until you're like, I mean, come on. I know he was kind of biased when, when Moses said that he was the most. What is the word? In Portuguese, it's manso. Meek. The meekest man on earth. Well, he wrote the book. That's why I said he was biased, right? But you see that something had to happen. He didn't stop ministry. He didn't stop his life. He didn't stop his, okay, God, yeah, I got it. Yeah, I struck the rock. Yeah, it was bad, but he had to keep on believing and allowing the Word of God to wash him. It's not a one-time thing. It is like once God highlights something, you allow the Word. You go after You get a concordance. I mean, today, so there's no excuse anymore when you have Google and Alexa and Siri. I mean, they, can, they are not even believers and they can quote you Scripture. <laughs> right? It is. It's funny when I tell Alexa, give me Bible verses for blah, blah. And she's like, there is this verse. Blah, 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 blah. Good call, Alexa. <laughs> I mean, it's funny that if you got a, someone called Alexa, she answers all the time. And if you have someone in the house, Alexa, what? <laughs> but there is, again, church, we have to go to the Word of God. I mean, there, there's more scriptures about the washing. John 17, 16. They are not of the world, just as I am not of the world. Church, we're not of this world. That's got to be it. We're not of this world. Sanctify them by your truth. Sanctify means wash them. Sanctify them by your truth. Your word is truth. Now, we always quote that scripture. And I like to, to bring that back because it is like, do we have freedom in Jesus? He who the sun sets free is free indeed, right? So that scripture is there. But if you don't know, you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. I can quote that scripture and still be bound. Because it's only when I get to know. It is like knowing a person. It's only when I know the word like I know someone. Then I'm free. So it's like you will know the truth and that truth that you know. Okay, you're not getting it, okay, because it's very quiet. So let me say it a different way. You will know the truth that my God shall supply all of my needs according with His riches and glory. And then you begin to have a relationship with this truth. And then you begin to tap into God's resources and God's provision. So now that I know, He will provide for me. Because it became personal. And it is in every area of our lives. It is the same way. It is like, okay, he will keep in perfect peace. He whose mind is on the Lord. Okay, my mind was wandering. My mind was here and there and everywhere. I had a problem in my mind. I had a problem of my thinking. Yes, but once I, and again, to know, I mean, some preachers, and I do that. Some of the verses that I read, I don't read five or six or ten. I read like 30 times. I read in different uh, translations. I read with the concordance by my side. One verse. Sometimes I stay a month in one verse. And then all of a sudden, that word that I've heard now becomes known to me. So then it is automatic. It is like, oh, I know that word. But I know, I personally, I personally know that, that word like a person. So then, yes, now you quote, it's different. It's like the Psalms 23. I mean, we, most of us know the Lord is my shepherd. And then you read it. It's like, yeah, that's a cute psalm. Yeah, we have, you know, plates and this and that on the walls. And yes, the Lord is my shepherd. Until you realize that you was a shepherd talking about the shepherd. And then you begin to realize that the shepherd, he, did, he relied on God's provision. He relied on green pastures that would come to, from God, that God would guide him so he could guide the sheep to waters that were calm. So he, the shepherd, became shepherd by God. So he knew that. We know that God is a healer. We know that he's a provider. We know. We hear that. But we need to become intimate. 
Are you with me? So it's the truth that we know that set us free. I mean, we've got so many promises here. We don't know all those things. But once you get to know that, then you walk in victory. No weapon formed against it shall be able to prosper. Well, for that to happen, there's going to have to be some kind of weapon. There's going to have to be some kind of attack. Is that the same thing? Like, How many of you would like to have a great victory? How many of you would like to have a great tribulation? See how the yes go like, yeah. For that to happen, you're going to have to have the trial, the tribulation, the great. And then you're going to have a great victory. You know, there's no great victory if you don't need to fight or do nothing. Oh, I'm so happy. Well, for you to be happy, you, sometime, somewhere you were sad. And now you know the difference. Amen. I got to finish. First John 1 John 1.9. If we confess our sins. If we confess our sins. Once you realize it, yes, let's confess. It's a confession. If, not, not, you know, if. There's a conditional there. If we confess our sins, He, the Lord, is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us. So there's got to be a confession. There's got to be like, Lord, I messed up. I'm sorry. Help me, Lord God. Put, plead the blood of Jesus that I won't do this again from all unrighteousness. John 3, 13. Look at this one. You call me teacher and Lord. You say, well, for so I, I am. If I then, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have given you an example that you should do as I have done for you. I mean, most of us, we don't do that. I mean, we don't do that in the natural because it's not our culture. But again, it's like we're going to go to the world. This week, we're going to go and do things and go places and go to supermarket. And a lot is going to happen. But we have to have the freedom that if we uh, go somewhere and something gets attached to our walking, because we're connected in Christ, I'm going to wash your feet. That is not okay for you. That is not good for you. And then you do it with compassion, and, and then you encourage that person. Are you with me? That's why we need friendships in the church. I mean, it is hard to be friends with everybody. But we need people that will come you know, with us, just like those four, and that they will bring us down to the presence of Jesus. And they will encourage us. I have here, I have people that they pray for me weekly. I know, I mean, if you don't, it's okay. I forgive you. But, you know, <laughs> there's people that really, 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 they pray for me every day. I got people in Brazil, they pray for me every day. But so we need those people. And, and if they identify something, it's like, hmm, that didn't sound good. Can, can we talk about it? And the goal is not to bring you down. The goal is to bring you up. The goal is like, wait a second. Somehow this thing got attached to you. We got to wash that off. How do we do it? With the Word of God. You know, so again, it, it is important, church, to have those relationships that you trust. I mean, you know, that, that brother, that, that uh, friend that is closer than a brother. That friend, is it in Proverbs that talks about faithful are the wounds of a friend? Because the friend is going to, you're going to say like, you know, that's not cool. That is not Okay. You said something. Can we talk about it so I can understand if that's what you meant? You know, and then you go from there and we all grow. Church, we, we, we got to stop being superficial. We got to go deep because there is deeper things that is happening in our lives over and over and over for years. And we keep cutting the fruit and it's like, I don't know why this keeps happening. It's because you got to go deeper. Amen. So say with me, we got to go deep. Hallelujah. So he washed their feet. For I get, have given you an example that you should do as I have done to you. Most assuredly, I say to you, I like this because it connects with Naaman and his servants. I say to you, a servant is not greater than his master. Nor is he who is sent greater than he who sent him. If you know these things, blessed are you if you do them. Do what? Feet washing. Foot washing. If you cleanse each other, you know, with the word, with the word of God. Now, 
So he goes in seven times. So he went down, verse 14, deep seven times in the Jordan. According to the saying of the men of God, his flesh was restored like the flesh of a little child. He was clean. He turned to the man of God, he and all his aides, and came and stood before him. So now the, the, the man of God is out, I guess, because he came to him. And he said, indeed, watch this, now I know. Say that with me. Now I know. I know. But he had to go through what he went through that he would know because he didn't know before he went and did what the prophet told him to do. Indeed, now I know that there is no God in all the earth except in Israel. Now, therefore, please take a gift from your servant. He said, as the Lord lives before whom I stand, I will receive nothing. He, and he urged him to take it, but he refused so Naaman said, then, if not, please let your servants be given two mule loads of earth. For your servant, watch this, because there was more, look at this. For your servant will you no longer offer either burnt offering or sacrifice to other gods, but to the Lord. Yes. Hallelujah. I mean, even the language changed before he wanted to be known as Naaman. And now he said, your servant. It was a shift. Some, it was not only, it was important because he could have died from that leprosy. But he went deeper, church. And that's where we got to go with the word of God. It's like, God, I, I'm, I'm, whatever it is, I'm sick and tired of being tired. I need to go to the word enough that I'm going to wash this thing away and somehow I'm going to have this supernatural energy because your word says that they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. And then you say it and then you buy the magnets and you put in your fridge and you write on the mirror in the bathroom. I mean, it's got to be in front of your eyes over and over and over. Yeah, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They that wait upon Lord, I've been waiting on you. Lord, is there anything happening that I'm waiting and my strength is not renewed? And Lord, and then you deal with that and you meditate and you see in different angles. It's like, okay, maybe I'm doing this and that is causing me to be tired. So yes, Lord, is that it? Then he highlights, yes. Yeah, so then you don't do that no more. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew and then you all of a sudden it's like you have the supernatural strength amen i mean i i love our kids it's like you know when we go out thank god really you know they they can't keep up with me when we go out and i'll be 50 this year and it's like we, we i'm serious Jesse and Bella, we went to Nashville. We walked and walked and walked and walked. And, and, and you got to understand, when I go out, it's like I never, ever in 30 years had a 30 days vacation, ever. I have two or three days here and there. So those two and three days, I'm going to make it count. That's how I do it. it is, and, and then it's like by the end of the day, I love when they say, Dad, can we please just go to a hotel? Dad, I don't know how you do it. I said, yes, now we can go. You know, because it's like, yes, that's the thing. It's like, uh, you know, two or three days. So in two days, I mean, we saw half of Nashville in two days. And they were like, oh, Dad. So they're never going to, they ever, never, ever, ever going to forget what we did. Because of all the, da -da 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 -da, you know, I mean, if I go out, if we wake up early. I'm not like, even if I stay in a hotel, I say, oh, Dad, this bed is so great. I said, no, we didn't come here to stay in a hotel bed. No, 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 there's a lot to happen. Come on, come on, come on. And then I find the music and I find something and it's like, that's how it is. It, it, it's like you, uh, you set the tone in the beginning of the day. You know, I mean, this week, I know it sounds silly and something like that, but I'm, I'm going to share it. You know, this week I was at home. The same thing, I, I, all of a sudden, <laughs> oh, Lord, forgive me, but it's what I did. I, I, I remember that, that little cartoon. I don't even know which one is it. They, they say Akuna Matata. Lion King. And so I asked, I asked Alexa. I said, Alexa. It was just me and her. Tell me what is Akuna Matata. 
And Alexa said, Akuna Matata means no worries. And then I said, okay, Alexa, play the song. I didn't know if there was a song or not. And Alexa sang Akuna Matata. So I got my wife and we were dancing on the kitchen. I mean, I was, she was just following me, right? Akuna Matata, no worries for the rest of our days. So it's, do I, I know it's silly, but it, it, I'm trying to teach you. It's like, let us start the day. Let us declare, like, you know, from the start to the end. You might have a bumps here and there, and yeah, something might take, a but, you know, as much as you can, do everything to be energetic, to be alive, to be happy, that when people connect to you, it's like, man, I want to be close to him. I want some of that. Because it's like, it is contagious. The same way that if we allow it, it's not that like, you know, yeah, I have days that is like terrible and sometimes I cannot break through that. But most days I'm really trying to set up the tone first thing in the morning. Put a worship song. Ask, you know, put, I mean, YouTube, it, get a verse or get something, get a scripture in. Put a worship that you know every time you hear that song, it takes you to the presence of God. I mean, that song, I love that song. I, I try to, I, almost every day I sing, I speak Jesus. Because every time I speak Jesus, I speak Jesus, I speak Jesus, I speak Jesus. I just want to say the name of Jesus. Your name is power. Your name, I mean, you declare that. And then all of a sudden the atmosphere changes. So when you're driving, it's like, you, you know, I know it's good to know some of the news, but most of them are bad news anyway. So you speak Jesus and you change the atmosphere. Are you blessed with this? So, but I want us to see this, that you see that he had not only a healing experience, the word of God cleansed him. The water, the more he dipped, it was like, I'm not going to trust my strength, my money, what I can do, my position, my status. No, 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 no. I really need healing. So I'm going to trust the word that the prophet said. I'm going to keep on dipping. Why? Because there's got to be something else than just being healed of leprosy. And then in the end, right there we see, it's like his heart changed. Amen? Stand with me. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for your word. Thank you, Lord, that we can still come to you and be cleansed and we can be healed of leprosy. Whatever it might be, Lord God, because it can be a little spot. But it can destroy our lives. It can grow more and more. And we don't want that to happen. We want to experience Jesus. Just like Naaman. Lord, to experience your power. To understand, Lord God, it was more than a skin disease. It was deeper than that. Lord, I pray that you would search our hearts today. I pray that we all, Lord God, would, would just like do like an inventory. That we would see, Lord God, things that we still have in our hearts. And whatever it is, Lord God, we're going to pray. We're going to fast if we need to. Lord, we're going to do whatever it takes. If it is pride, if it is love of money, if it is anger, bitterness, resentment, unforgiveness. So, Lord, in Jesus' name, we want to be free, Lord God. We want to know the truth that set us free. We want to have this intimate relationship with your word. We want the word to come alive in us. Lord, when we read the word, the word is going to read us. Lord, when we listen, it is like we're going to hear not only what, what we hear, but we're going to hear what you're saying to us through that word. Father, that we won't come. Well, Lord, and we, we've seen for the last two or three years, everybody wearing masks. But Lord, there's something worse than the masks. There's something worse that we might put on. There's something worse that we might just so everything would look fine and okay. But Lord, we want to have this abundant life that you came to give us. We know the enemy, Lord, came to kill, steal, and destroy. But you came that we might have life, that we might have it to the full. So I pray, Lord God, everyone here, everyone watching at home, I pray, Father God, that we would be serious about, Lord, we're going to continue to dive into the Word of God. We're going to go deeper and deeper and deeper because we want to live in victory. We want to live, Lord God. That's what, what it is, to, to, to training us, Lord God, to, to live a victorious life. In the name of Jesus, I ask you to bless. In the name of Jesus, I pray that the anointing would come. 
And Lord, that we won't be offended like Naaman at first when we hear something that seems so simple, but that we would follow through your instructions and that we would see great outcome. Oh, God. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God. Do you agree with that? So say with me, Lord Jesus, touch my mind, touch my heart. Let your light shine every area of my life. In Jesus' name, I want to be free. I want people to see Jesus in me and through me. And what I do, what I say, it's going to be Jesus. And your name will be glorified. In Jesus' name. Amen? Come on, let's give it up. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Well, just a quick